Have you ever met one of those people who just can't be stopped? It's like they're unstoppable. Yeah, I have. Me too. What's their mystique? Nothing stops these people. Don't stop. Welcome to Mission Unstoppable with Coach Frankie Picasso. You're about to meet some of the most amazing people. They've accomplished their goals despite insurmountable odds. They beat adversity, physical hardship, and traumatic events, and emerged triumphantly. They're people just like you and me, and they're winners. Are you unstoppable? Here's Frankie to show you how. Well, hello there, and welcome to another Mission Unstoppable. I am so glad that you have joined me this week and every week that you come. It's so much fun to have you here. Today, I have a very exciting guest for you. He is a three-time world wrestling champion, a recent inductee into the WWE Hall of Fame. He's a motivational speaker, actor, and co-developer of a revolutionary fitness program called DDP Yoga. And its tag is, it's not your mama's yoga. Wow. Uh, there's so much to say about Diamond Dallas Page, but, you know, why don't we hear it directly from him? You don't need to hear it from me. <laughs> Come on. Let's meet him. Hello, Dallas. Welcome to the show. Frankie, I love the name of your show. I love the name of your show. It's, it, it's, it's all about being unstoppable. As a matter of fact, right now, are you familiar with the uh, publishing company Rodale? Are you familiar yes. with them? Yes. Yeah, they did The Secret. They've done a bunch of – they they own men's health, women's health, men's fitness. They own – every publication they own is about making a difference. And they signed, they signed me, uh, gave me a, a really sweet upfront, <laughs> you know, uh, which I didn't even think they did that anymore. But I guess they do that with authors uh, where they give you uh, upfront money to get you up and get you going. Nice, and yeah. uh, I, I signed a book deal with them for a book, and you'll love the name of this. It's called Positively Unstoppable, and it's the art of owning it. I love it. I love that. That is great. That is going to be an amazing book. When is it coming out? I uh, probably 2018. I can't remember the exact date they were they were searching for. I just gave them my first draft and. Uh, you know, I'm just waiting to hear back from them right now. Uh, I, I think it's pretty good. We'll see what they think. <laughs> yeah. Well, this is, this is Mission Unstoppable. So I like to go back to the beginning so people can figure out how did he become so unstoppable? Like, where did that come from? So let's go back to little, little Paige. <laughs> yeah. you're, a little, little, you're a little guy. You're just a little guy. And, and your family dynamic. How, what was your family dynamic like? Well, you know, I, I, I often tell the story like this. By the time I was three years old, my mom was married, divorced, and had three kids. She was 19 at the time. So mm. when my parents split up, my brother and sister went to live with my mom, who in turn had to give the, the kids to my grand, my brother and sister to my grandmother, because she had to move up north to try to make more money to help support that side of the family. Me, I went to live with my dad. You know, mainly because I was like a crazy daddy's daddy's boy thing. But, you know, back then, my dad was only 21. Oh, and yeah. back then, he could, he could barely spell the word father, let alone be one. So I ended up bouncing around from one family to another. And when I was eight years old, my dad finally brought me to live with my grandmother. And it killed him to have to give me up. But he oh, sure. knew I, I needed some family structure. And that was yeah. the last time I would see my dad or talk to him when he was sober. For the oh next my gosh, years, so. really? That's and where I, was that? Was with. that was that in New Jersey in, or where was that? In, yeah, in Point in, Pleasant, New Jersey. Yeah, down oh. what we would say down the shore. Yeah, down the shore. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's and is that where where you know this love that you have for for those who are kind of down and out like. You know, Jesse, the alcoholics, the drug abusers. Is that does that love come from from your dad? You know, God. You know, I I would say some of that does the understanding that that it does take. You know, at times and the, the power. You know, like not to judge people. Like mm -hmm. at a very early age, you know, if I was at my mother's house, they would bury my father. You know, if I was at my yeah. at my on my fa my father's side, they'd bury my mother. And I, you know, at a very early age, I figured out that these, they were kids. 
when they got, you know, got, had kids and had babies. They were kids. And uh, I really didn't judge them for the mistakes that they made and what, what had happened. And I was lucky to have my grandmother, uh, mm-hmm. you know, because she was a rock. But, uh, you know, I pretty much, you know, because she was going through menopause while she was, <laughs> while she oh. was uh, <laughs> raising me. So uh, that was, I'm sure that was enlightening to a certain degree. But, uh, you know, I, a lot of it I raised myself, you know, too. And I became very um, independent on what I wanted to do and how I wanted to do things. And they weren't always the best moves for me. <laughs> but So were you I, like I the class like... clown? I, I can just see you well, being, you know, the loudest in the classroom. Look at me. <laughs> yeah, I would I would say more than anything it was because I, you know, I grew up with ADD and dyslexia at sure. a time when no one knew what the hell ADD or dyslexia was. They yeah. just thought we were stupid. And like I could, I got through class by basically cheating because that's the only way I could get through. And I mean, it wasn't like I could read, you know, right. so, but I could, right. I could mimic and I listened. And I would get involved in class participation, so I at least knew enough about what I needed to do. When it came to writing essays and stuff, that was ridiculous. Yeah, you know, I, right. I, I, I barely, I barely got through school, and I really thought that it had to do with, yeah, you know, I just wasn't book smart. But mm-hmm. once I realized that, and it was my ex-wife who, who, who diagnosed me originally before I had it done professionally. Um, but she was like, oh, my God, you're dyslexic. I'm like, what the hell is that? And I was 30. And I was 31 oh, wow. at the time. Uh, I was reading at about a third grade level at that time. So, uh, you know, probably the most challenging thing I've ever done, and I've done some pretty challenging things in my life, yeah. uh, but learning how to read, you know, my 30s, 40s, 50s. <laughs> you that's know, crazy. Uh, learning- wow. That, congratulations yeah. on that. That That's really, that takes a lot of, you know. Uh, a lot of, um, you know, I don't know, gumption or whatever. I can't think of the right word at the moment, but that takes a lot to to want to just do it. I mean, you're living your life. You didn't need to do that necessarily, but you did it. So, wow. I I, I knew, I knew some, I knew someday I wanted to be an actor. I just Mm -hmm. knew that was inside of me. And, you know, I, I, yeah, I've learned a lot of lessons over life, like, you know, and, and some great quotes are what, you know, the repetitions of affirmations, you know, leads to belief. And once that belief becomes a deep conviction, things begin to happen. And, you know, to me, it's like understanding the, that you you control what you think about. You control mm-hmm. the way you behave. A lot of us, were, you made me do that. Like, no, that's not really what happened. They yeah. didn't push buttons, but you allowed that to happen. And a lot of people really want to blame other people for things that happen to them or what All happens the time. in their life. And really, it's you, no matter yeah. what. Because as much as people don't want, you know, want to say, well, I, want, I, I don't have control of that. Like, yeah, you do. You just got to take control. You know, it's, exactly. it's all about owning. It's all about owning it. And when it came to my reading... I could have gone on and, you know, and it was super challenging, especially when I'm trying to do it by myself. Oh, did and you? I started to take one word at a time. I didn't really get to working with a teacher uh, until I was 48. And I that was, was living really... in LA. At, yeah. When I was living in LA, and I've already become a pretty decent, I'd say like, fifth grade reader <laughs> you know i become a, a much better a whole country. <laughs> well, that's all you need to read like the sun you know the newspapers no, right, you right. at fourth grade level but right you know, they, they, they say right? that most people most most people don't read past the sixth grade level you know that's what yeah. they say you know except for the people who are really smart and, and or, or just love books and everything but you know i was getting by and then i i, I met a friend of mine who had the same issues i had and he was like, "Hey, you have to go to the Eris Learning Center. There's a woman there named Rose. She's about 85 right now, and she taught and she had taught my buddy Billy back when she was 80. It was about five years earlier. Oh wow, and I she, love it. He, and he said, he said how much she really helped him. So I went two days a week when I was living in LA, and I probably did it for about nine months, and." What's really funny to me, she said that I took home more homework 
than any student she'd ever had. Because I really wanted to, I wanted to get over this hump. Yeah. And all the little exercises that they teach you, like it didn't make sense to me that they wouldn't teach that in grade school. Like why, if you, someone knows how to do this, yeah. why aren't they teaching this? Because so many kids can't read and so many kids have problems with, you know, ADD and ADHD and all that. It didn't make sense to me that it's not part of the, you know, the structure yeah, it's not part of the curriculum, and, and it should be right. because I mean, you look at all those those athletes that you know get by because they have to play. But if if they right. actually gave them the information they needed to get by, they'd be more than getting by. They'd be doing right, and and they'd be on the other side of it. When and they'd be on the other side. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We're gonna go to commercial break in about a minute or so. But um, let, let so so how long did it take Rose to teach you? And like, did you just, you just catapulted from, I mean, it just shows how unstoppable you are in every area of your life. Really? I well, mean, look know, at that. It's just, I, I just focus on things. I, I, I focus on things that I love to do, but I focus on things that I'm not good at. Because and age I doesn't get matter. Better. It doesn't. I mean, I'm, I'm 61 right now and I'm about to get my biggest break ever in my acting world. And oh. it, it, because you never know what's going to go. But if Netflix has changed the world, then oh, yeah. you know, Amazon and all these other channels, and I've got a show that's going to be coming out in, um, I would imagine it's going to be late winter of 2018, but if it clicks, and you never know, it's a superhero, it's a very dark superhero dramedy, and, uh, it, uh, and I'm the lead of it. And it could be something, I guess say, you never know what's going to hit. But if it does, it'll change my life again on that level. Okay, well, look at this. Diamond Dallas Page is going from a B actor to a, to a leading actor, a leading man in 2018. We're about to go to commercial breaks. That's why I'm stopping you. But don't go anywhere. You're going to want to hear more about what he has to say. What a fascinating guy. What a fascinating life. How unstoppable is he to have recognized, you know, his wife said you're dyslexic and he goes and he fixes it. Good for him. Good for all of you who are listening and are going to go do it too. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Don't stop. That's right. Don't stop listening. Mission Unstoppable with Coach Frankie Picasso will continue right after these messages. Stop. Information about book publishing is power. The power to change your authoring life and the power to change the lives of your readers. So join us for Your Guide to Book Publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. With your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. Thursdays at 6 p.m. Eastern, 3 Pacific. You'll hear about statistics, scenarios, and strategies on what to do now. As the book shepherd, Dr. Judith Bryles is in. And each week, she will include publishing professionals that will reveal tips and secrets to the author's journey. If there is a book in you, you want to listen, learn, And yes, call in with your questions each week. For more on Judith and what she can do for you, check out her website, thebookshepherd.com. It's your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. Brought to you by Author You and The Book Shepherd with your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. Thursday evenings at 6 p.m. Eastern, 3 p.m. Pacific. This is the Tokinet Radio Network. Radio with a cutting edge. butt dialed someone accidentally according to a report for every 100 calls made to 911 this year about 40 were dialed unintentionally recently a mother in canada called police after receiving a nightmarish cell phone call from her daughter filled with blood chilling screams and a man shouting murderous threats police discovered that the girl was at a movie theater in victoria Anticipating the worst, the cops were preparing to descend on the cinema when a dispatcher tried calling the girl's cell phone one last time. The girl answered her phone and explained she was not being attacked by a murderer, but was watching the horror film Cabin in the Woods. What do you call the activity of being impolite in a social situation by looking at your phone instead of paying attention to the person you are with? Fubbing. It's marching day. I'm Carolyn Davidson, and you can have fun challenging your words you never heard vocabulary with my free app, Too Funny for Words.
Hey, we're back. I'm back. It's your host, Frankie Picasso. You're listening to Mission Unstoppable Radio. My guest today is Diamond Dallas Page. And before we went to break, he was telling us about an exciting new venture coming up on Netflix where he is a dark superhero. And you are a superhero, Dallas. You know, you really are. At 35, you decided, I mean, you decided, hey, I think I'm going to become a pro wrestler. Like, who does that? People are, are ending their careers, not starting their careers. <laughs> like, right. Yeah. So you were managing what nightclubs? You were doing a little announcing. Is that kind of you were kind of like yeah. in the in the world a I, little bit? Yeah, I tried to wrestle when I was 22. I had a couple of matches. I was horrible. Uh, I got hurt, and then it put me out. But it opened up my nightclub career, and I did that. You know, I was all I was all over the Jersey Shore and Florida on the West Coast. And it's, I got in, back into wrestling as a color commentator and a manager, which means you talk for people. And I did the smaller, little independent things. But I finally got a break and to go to WCW, which was owned by Ted Turner. And about six months in, they were like, listen, Dallas, with the hair, the rap, the bling, the diamond dolls, like you're overshadowing the wrestler. And, uh, <laughs> you know, in other words, I was too over the top for professional yeah. wrestling as a manager. So, you know, they, you know, I had the opportunity because I had seven months left on my contract. I was like, I never dreamed of being a manager or color commentator when I was a kid. You know, I dreamed of being a wrestler. I'm going to go down the power plant, which is where they train young guys coming up. And I'm talking mm-hmm. about in their 20s, early 20s, you know, and I'm 35 and a half. And I went in that ring, man, and I just worked harder than anybody there and it, it it took five years but when i was 40 my career blew up how and amazing so is that I, you know i'm gonna, I'm gonna <laughs> here's my <laughs> secret i've never been to a wrestling match ever now i i used well, to manage I, a world kickboxing champion and i put on a lot of boxing shows but i've never been to wrestling well the, Crazy, the eh? crowd is the crowd is 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 probably the most entertaining thing because yeah, you know, yeah. it's not just you know, wrestlers in the ring; they bring the the entertainment and the the energy. But the crowd, oh my God, a wrestling wrestling fans are the greatest fans in the world because they won't they'll let you know when you're killing it, but they'll let you know when you're sticking the place out too. You know, wow. because if you don't, if you're not putting the work in, you know, they'll do the worst thing they can do: do nothing. You know, if they're, they're if they're booing you or cheering you, that's that's what you want. You want them involved. You know, it's sort of like you know, I sit down and I watch, you know, different shows on Netflix or HBO, and when I'm pulled in by the characters that I care about, the characters, that becomes a show I won't miss. And that's the way it is in professional wrestling. If you don't care about the characters, right. they never make it. Right. It's but one of the one of the compliments there. about you was that you were very good at at creating new characters, so keeping things fresh. Right. Well, you got to constantly reinvent yourself. You right. know, and pro- probably nobody better than that than you know, say someone like uh, William Shatner, you uh, know, who from from Captain Kirk to uh, you know to uh, T.J. Traveling Hooker the planet to, with your old friends. <laughs> you know, <laughs> just it, it's, it's all about yeah. You know, it's. Uh, to, to me, it's uh, you've always got to be reinventing yourself and giving the yeah. people something more. And you know, when I when I started in professional wrestling at 35, when my career blew up when I was 40, that was 96 and 96, 97, 98, 99. Wrestling owned the cable networks. We were mm-hmm. the top most times the top four shows on you know the top ten. That was the WCW and WWF. And in 98, at the end of 98, I was literally on top of the world. And then I blew my back out. And that's where DDP yoga comes from. Yeah, let's talk about that. What kind of, you know, what kind of shape were you in when you blew your back out? Like, like how long were were you in a hospital? Were you at home? Could you walk? Like, what was going on? What did it look like? Prior to... Prior to it, I was in phenomenal shape, and I stretched my whole career. So I didn't think anything like this ever happened to me. But when you rupture your L4 and L5, you know, we, our, our spine you know, is unbelievable. And mm-hmm. our vertebrae are really able to move the way they, it does 
because of these incredible shock absorbers that are like, they're called discs. And discs are what's in between the vertebrae that allows us to move with such, you know, unbelievable, you know, movement. And Mm -hmm. when you take, if you stepped on a jelly donut, that's what it would be like when I say I ruptured my disc. So my L4 and L5, those two discs don't even exist. And now it's anymore. bone on bone. Right. They, they don't exist So did you anymore. lose a couple of inches too? Um, I, I probably maybe a quarter of an inch or something like that. Cause they're not that thick. They're, they're dramatically thick for what they need to be, right. but they're not. In fact, it's like a size factor. You know, I, maybe I lost a half an inch, quarter of an inch, but what happens is what I figured out how to do. Cause I, DDP yoga isn't yoga. It's like it's 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 not just yoga for people who wouldn't be caught dead doing yoga. It's right. it's a different brand. I use I use a lot of the positions, but I mm-hmm. also use a lot of bit a lot of rehabilitation techniques. I use a lot of old school calisthenics, push up squats, crunches, meets dynamic resistance, and all that is is the flexing and engaging of muscles. Think of lifting weight. When you mm-hmm. lift weights, and I'll just say something like a curl, and you're going to mm-hmm. take two dumbbells, one in each hand, and then you're going to curl them. Just do curls with the dumbbells, lifting them up. You're not just using your biceps. You're mm-hmm. using your hands, your forearms, your shoulders, even a little bit of your triceps. You're using your core, your quads, your glutes, your feet. You're using so many muscles. And think of it like this. When you're laying down, your heart rate's the lowest ever. Mm -hmm. Sit up, your heart rate goes up. Stand, your heart rate goes up. Walk, jog, run, sprint, up, 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 up. So what I figured out to do, and it's like lifting weights without lifting weight. The engaging and flexing of muscles, I call it dynamic resistance. So what I created in less than three months, I created uh, a workout now known as DDP yoga that's kick-ass cardio, dramatically increase your flexibility, strengthen your core like never before, all with minimal joint impact. In less than three months, I was back in the ring. I had three specialists, spine specialists, tell me my career was over at 42. Wow. At, 40, at 43, I was the world champ. And that's incredible. You, imagine, you know, one of the one of the, the video that actually uh, got me to look you up was Jared's uh, Arthur's video. I looked at Arthur, Arthur and yeah. I go, Arthur, you look like me. <laughs> I was in a motorcycle no. accident. I broke both femurs oh. and pelvis. I can't, you know, like moving today hurts like hell. And I looked at him. I thought, oh, my God. God, how did he transform himself? He had to be unstoppable, too, because it couldn't have been easy for him. Oh, it was brutal for him, you know, walking with knee braces, back braces, and canes for over 15 years. Yeah. We're talking about a, disab- a disabled vet who was 5'6", 297 pounds, and all he wants to do is lose 50 pounds so the vets will operate on him and, and fix his oh. knees. Oh, my god! And gosh. that's his goal, lose 50 pounds. He's the first person I ever talked to that I didn't know online. And this was about 10 years ago. What I'd done is everybody who invested in my, it was just DVDs back then. Mm-hmm. I would send them an email saying, hey, I'm not trying to sell you anything. I want to thank you for getting the program. And I'd love to ask you five questions. And his answers were unbelievable. So I sent him back, uh, you know, a thank you for answering those five questions. Uh, but I said, it sounds like you need some help. Tell me a little bit about yourself. And he said, uh, the, the cliff notes are disabled vet, morbidly obese, and he had relegated to thinking of himself as a piece of furniture. Yeah. That's and it's heartbreaking to watch that. I mean, to see him in the beginning. Like, I was, oh, like, yeah. in tears. Yeah, well, and when he, he tried to get his balance and then he just fell forward, I'm like, oh, my gosh, let me pick him up. Poor man. Yeah, but, he, wow, what a he, transformation. What a transformation. 
it, so it what, was, he lost it, like 150 it, pounds or something? How much did he lose? 100, 140, but in the first month, well, what had happened? Just like I sent him, he sent me some pictures. I saw him, and I sent him this food plan that a, a guy, Dr. Fred Bishy, had developed. And it's a very similar to my phase three eating program. But for Arthur, it was all about health. Mm-hmm. And if he would have sent me back, I think I can do it or I'll give it a try, I would have said, hey, keep me posted. Great job. But he didn't say that. He said, I can do this. And I said, send me your phone number. That's the first person I actually pick up the phone and call that I didn't know. And we went on this journey. Remember, he only wants to lose 50 pounds. Yeah. The first month, he, first month, because of Fred's plan and my workout, and most importantly, his unstoppable mindset, he yeah. lost 32 pounds the first month, 22 the second, 18 the third. That's 72 pounds in three months. Oh, he would go incredible. on. <clears throat> he would go on to lose 140 pounds. More importantly, lose the knee braces, the back brace, and the wraparound cage. Not just to walk, but run. Even more importantly, Frankie, he's never had the knee operation. Wow. Wow. And he food. has no pain today. Well, of course, we all have pain. Yeah. And I'm sure he's pain and discomfort at times. But he's still moving around without any crutches and knee braces. God bless him. That was bless you too. We're going to go to commercial break in, the, in a little less than a minute. But you know, honestly, like that has to make you feel amazing to transform somebody's life. And you've transformed a lot of lives now. But to transform a life like like Jared's, and and go, wow, you know what? I inspired him. I did this. I helped him. Like he had to do it himself. I mean, you can't make him move his arms and legs. But you know, just to have that power to to inspire somebody and say, you know what, I believe in you. Because as a coach, this is what I, I, I do the same thing. Is right. I say, you know what, I believe in you enough that I'm going to hold that belief for you until you believe in yourself. And that's right. what you do. And that's and you're a coach to your list. And that's what you do, you know, uh, as an inspirational coach. And, and, you know, what a human being you are. Thank you for, for being who you are. We're going to go to commercial break. Don't go anywhere. Dallas is going to be with us when we come back. Here we go. Don't stop. That's right. Don't stop listening. Mission Unstoppable with Coach Frankie Picasso will continue right after these messages. Don't stop. It's marching down the road. Have you seen the video of the little seal that jumped into the back of a boat to escape being eaten by killer whales? A family was whale watching near Vancouver Island, British Columbia, when they noticed a pod of orcas swimming around their boat. All of a sudden, a harbor seal swam up to the stern of their boat and jumped in with the orcas hot on his tail. When a whale leaps out of the water, exposing most of its body, it's called breaching. There are 32 different species of seals distributed throughout the world and are found from polar to tropical waters. The largest concentrations of seals in the U.S. are in California and New England. Everyone who has seen the video agrees this was one lucky seal. What's another word for the fear of the sea? Thalassophobia. It's marching down. I'm Carolyn Davidson, and you can have fun challenging your words you never heard vocabulary with my free app, Too Funny for Words. It's the Fitness Minute with fitness expert, Annette Hammond. Late afternoon snacking can really be a challenge. Vending machines seem to be everywhere, whether you are in an office building, hospital, or school. While most vending machine snacks are not low-calorie, there are a few smart picks. Weight Watchers recommends choosing an energy bar, a cereal bar, or a trail mix that does not include candy. Avoid peanut butter cups, frosted pastries, cookies, and chips. Sometimes all it takes is a diet soda to curb that late afternoon hunger. While diet soda is not a healthy choice, it keeps calories low and fills you up until you can get some wholesome food. The best course of action is to plan for those energy dips and long hours by bringing in fresh fruit, low-fat cheese, and yogurt. Avoiding vending machines is also a good idea. Be sure to plan ahead. For the Fitness Minute, I'm Annette Hammond. And we're back. We're back with 
Diamond Dallas Page and, you know, all the great conversations happen off air. And, you know, some of you know that I had that motorcycle accident and I broke a bunch of stuff and I was in the hospital for six months. And that was in 2003. I was 46 years old. And Dallas, you know, I did buy buy the, the program and I, I admitted to Dallas a minute ago that I didn't start it. And he's going to yell at me now. So let go. <laughs> <laughs> You know, to to me, it's like everything happens for a reason. Yeah. You know, and you get to decide if it's a good reason or a bad reason and what you're going to do about it. So, Frankie, here's the deal. You tell me you're in a lot of pain, and I guess that all the time from so many people. Yeah. You Have you ever seen the movie Food, Inc.? Not f- Food, Inc.? I think I might have saw Food, Inc. Is, well, who's the remember. star of that one? Is, is that the one with There's the John no Gary? Yeah, but no, you need to watch it again because if you, okay, it, it's it's the first one you should watch, and the second one, which is even more important, is a movie called Genetic Roulette. Now, Food Inc. is on Netflix. Genetic okay. Roulette is like on Amazon. It might cost you two ninety nine or something. Yeah, but I got Amazon video. Yeah, yeah, but I, I'm not sure how that works with that. But either way, it's called Genetic Roulette. Because okay. your your country, like our country, it's all full of genetically modified food. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Which means it's not real. And people can pick up genetic uh, GMOs and say how good they are. All I know is everyone that I deal with, not everyone, mm-hmm. but a, a vast majority, are people who are big, they are beat up, and they're older, and their body is not performing the way it has because of either accidents, car crashes, or being an athlete. Most times being an athlete because they beat their body up so bad. Sure. Once you start eating real food, I'm talking about the food that God created. If you're going to eat processed food, well, then it needs to at least start as food. Yeah. And what they've done to the wheat, corn, soy, uh, uh, milk. I mean, what they've done to the food. Yep, don't listen to the wrestler. Watch the professionals smarten you up. Now, you're never going to see any of these movies on cable or on the networks because how could they do commercials for Doritos, McDonald's, yeah, for sure. you, know, you know, Papa John's? How can <laughs> they do it? They can't yeah. because... It's all the stuff they're telling you is garbage. Now, yeah. you are what you eat, but you are also what they eat, meaning the chickens, the fish, yes. the cows. You have to watch Food Inc., Genetic Roulette. Everyone who works with me that is beat up and big, I get them to go GMO-free, which is basically – very similar to a paleo diet. Yeah, and, yeah, I'm doing paleo now. Yeah. Well, if you're com- if you're completely paleo, that means you're no wheat and no dairy, but it just can't be in bread and milk. Da- wheat is in everything. Yeah, and if it you're is. really as beat up, because you're never going to work out if you're in too much pain. But if you put real food in your body, within two and a half weeks, you will feel dramatically different. So how simple is that? Eat protein and vegetables. I mean, that's how simple it is. I can do that. And I watched I watched your cooking show today. I watched you make um, zucchini with tomatoes and onions. I thought, gee, I'd really like to have that for lunch. That looks good. It was delicious. <laughs> my little, I like my little it. zucchini pizza. You know? But again, yeah, the pizza. if you yeah. want to feel if you want to feel healthy, that's where it starts. The food, then you start the workouts. And when you're doing DDPY workouts, you're breaking up scar tissue, mm-hmm. which is causing you the pain and the inflexibility. So and the inflammation. as you're breaking yeah. up Yeah, but you have to get the inflammation from the food, the that's garbage right. that you're eating out of you. Because that's where it starts. Like, my wife is a cancer survivor. She Mm -hmm. no chemo in her body. I took her to Mexico and did alternative alternative, uh, medicine. Mm -hmm. And 
she's she's a cancer survivor, and her body has not been destroyed by all the chemo that's gone into her body either, because that's what happens to a lot of people. Sure. They get so scared, they go right to conventional medicine, which, you know, it, it, people have to do what works for them. All I know is the one thing that rings true in anyone who knows anything is eat real food. Now, if you're eating a lot of vegetables, and, mm-hmm. and you, you look, I, there's not a rawest or a vegetarian. I'm talking about people who eat vegetables. There's not a vegetarian out there, like especially a rawest, that has cancer. It's impossible because their alkalinity in their body is around 7.4, and cancer cannot live in that environment. Yeah. Now, I, I don't eat like that. But I don't eat. I don't eat wheat. I don't eat dairy. I don't eat genetically modified food. I eat what God created. And okay, I gotta ask you though I, one thing because you did put some Romano cheese on the, the those things. Does that not count as dairy? Sheep, or are you allowed sheep. to have a little bit? No, sheep and goat. Sheep and goat. Okay. I'm not. I'm not talking about sheep and goat. Oh, okay. I'm talking about cow. Oh, and okay. again, it's what they've done to mass distribute the cow. Sure. Again, Food Inc. going to smarten you up to all that. Yeah. Then I watched Genetic Forks Over Knives, and, and I stopped everything after that one. So I will watch Food Inc. again, and I, I'm well, sure I did watch you. it. I'll watch it again. When you did, um, watch, when you did watch Forks Over Knives, and yeah. for that couple of months you were good, how'd your body feel? Uh, probably not enough to... to uh, I don't know. You know what? Probably I, you were, I, I probably so much you were stuff, still stuff cheating. To work. So I probably have to do it no, longer. No, you, I just probably have to do it no, longer. You, have to, you know, I, you I'm have good for 12 weeks, and then I seem to, you know, hit hit the road. Jack. Yeah, but you have to really <laughs> own it. I'm just saying yeah. for three weeks. Just but I'm going to commit weeks. to you, Dallas, because oh. I, I, you know what? I'm going to commit to you. You've inspired me, re-inspired me. I, you know, I, I got back on everything, and you know, I committed to my daughter last night. We started our our new uh, regime, and we threw out everything in the house. So I'm going to commit to you. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do your program. <clears throat> I'm going to eat well, and we are going to see in let's say three months if there's any difference. And do the do do the stand up workouts with the chair. I mean, yeah. I've got those chair workouts. Where the guys who are leading him, well, Zach Dowen, who leads it, he's an amputee. And mm-hmm. he's doing the workout using the chair. And I show people how to use it, especially our chair workouts. We are about to, uh, we just finished filming it. We're editing it right now that we actually have DDPY for seniors coming out on Black Friday. The first three workouts are in bed. Really? Because some wow. people can't get out of bed. The next five workouts are sitting in a chair. To build that strength to get out of the chair, the next five workouts are you using the chair for balance and strength. To build that up so you can do the other beginner or intermediate workouts where you can use the chair as you know, a prop, like you might use a yeah. block or something. Because you can't go up and go down. Well, that's why I create all these stand-up workouts. But then it's all about balance, and you use the chair to help you. Like, in my, when I'm doing uh, teaching in my class, I might have 35 people there. Three of them might have – five of them might have chairs. And then there might be some kids there. There'll be Ted Evans, who's 83 years young. He's been working with me since he was 68. He's, oh, like, a, he's like a stud. You know, so – the, the workouts for the seniors are going to really, it's really going to help people focus. And, and the two people doing them with me, I'm 61, Terry, she's 66, and Ted's 83. I so no one it. can tell me what they can or can't do. Yeah. I mean, I look at my dad. He's so inspiring to me. You know, he goes to the gym. He's 94. His wife is 60. You know, I mean, like, it's amazing. But... Is he really? <laughs> yeah, he lives That's in Mexico. Wild. He's a, he's he's incredible by that. <laughs> he oh looks he's, he looks really great. Yeah, he's in pretty good shape. That's but he crazy. also had you know a little bit of problem. But you know what? He does it, and he's unstoppable. And I just have to say, yep, I have to be unstoppable. I was unstoppable. I'm still unstoppable, and I will continue to be. So there we go. <laughs> I love it. And That's you know what I really love about your about the guys that work for you? They all sound like this. 
Oh, it's so funny. I was listening. To, I was watching a video today. One of the uh, one of the beginning workout videos that I don't know who, what his name was, but he sounded like you, and I thought that's funny. They all sound like you. <laughs> uh, they, they're all they're manly men. Manly yeah. men. Manly men. Doing doing DDPY. Notice I never call it yoga because again, it is, yeah. but it's not. And uh, you know, I want I just want people to have fun with what they're doing. You know, if, if people are entertained and they're having fun, they never really think about the work part because they're having a good time. Right. Yeah. And, and I did, you know what? I mean, I, right away I bought my heart monitor. I bought I, everything you told me to do. I did. I just didn't start. So. Now you have to do it. <laughs> I'm going to do it. So I'm on board. So what you, you got so, me. So what are you, so what are you going to start? Right Can after I, the show. All right, here's what I'm going to do. When we get off the air, I'm going to give you my email. And okay. I'm going to let you be accountable to me. And let okay. me know what, what you're doing. And okay. I'll tell you what. Write down all your food. Everything yep. you're eating. Everything yep. you're drinking. What time. I always tell people, just don't think it. Ink it. you got to write it down. You do. you got to be in your face. you got to be accountable to you. Like you talked about believing in people. You know, yeah. I always say never underestimate the power you give someone by believing in them. But even more importantly, never underestimate the power you give yourself by believing in you because that's the most important person. And it's not being selfish. It's you have to love you. You know, you have to stay on you. You have to have that steady stream of that unstoppable energy to achieve the goals and dreams that you want to. You know, again, 61 years young. That's how old I am right now. And I don't think any different than when I was 41. And to be perfectly honest, I was way smarter and way more together at 41 than I was at 31. So to me, it's always like, what's the next challenge? What's the next thing you're going to you know, set for goals? Where, what are you going to do fitness level? Like the other day, I we're did going, a, wait, I, I got to stop because we're going to commercial. Hold that thought for when we come back. You want to stay young? Don't go anywhere because when we come back, Dallas has, has the uh, secret to staying young for you. With Coach Frankie Picasso, we'll continue right after these messages. Stop. It's marching down the curve. Halloween is almost here, and the Scarecrows, or Tatty Dooleys, as the Scottish call them, are out. But Halloween is all about trick-or-treating, and that means candy. The average American eats 24 pounds of candy a year, and most of that consumption occurs around Halloween. What do you call a person who loves to eat? A grand gozier. Popular costumes for this year are happy face and wink face emojis. Of course, since it's a presidential election year, there are various costume choices for those who wish to dress up as Democratic candidate Hillary Clinton or Republican candidate Donald Trump. If you ask me, the only thing scarier than Halloween this year is the presidential election. What's another word for the fear of Halloween? Sam Hainophobia. It's marching day. I'm Carolyn Davidson, and you can have fun challenging your words you never heard vocabulary with my free app, Too Funny for Words. It's the Fitness Minute with fitness expert, Annette Hammond. Have you ever felt that you're too busy to exercise? That is a common excuse, and one that is used quite often. But the reality is, we make time for what is important to us. We all get 24 hours in a day, and it's simply a matter of prioritizing and managing your time. If you have time to watch your favorite television program, get a manicure, or read a book, you have time to exercise. I always encourage my clients to exercise first thing in the morning, if possible. Roll out of bed 30 minutes earlier, put on your exercise clothes, and head outside for a brisk walk or run, or head to the gym. Get it done early before the demands of the day interfere with your exercise schedule. Starting your day off with exercise is energizing, invigorating, and mood enhancing. For the Fitness Minute, I'm Annette Hammond. And we're
we're back. I'm your host, Frankie Picasso. You're listening to Mission Unstoppable Radio. My guest today is Diamond Dallas Page, and we have been talking about his DDP yoga. And you're probably wondering, you know, how can you do it too? You want to do it, right? You're inspired. You're all fired up. He got me fired up. He's got, we got you all fired up. So, Dallas, tell us about the app. Tell us about how people can watch it, perform it, do it, whatever. Where do they, where do they well, go? You know, I, I developed this amazing app, but I want to first focus on people who still have, you know, I don't want to screw with an app. I want DVDs because we still have a lot of people who invest in the DVD portion. Sure. Everything's up on D, ddpyoga.com. And when you get there, you'll see the different packages we have, you know, for people who want to come in and start the program. But it's not just about the workout. You know, it's about, you know, like you say, I went on and watched one of your cooking shows. You see, that's the kind of stuff you get from the app. Motivational Mondays. Every Monday, I've got a new motivational message for Mm -hmm. you to start your day with. And again, I opened up with a quote, and it's the repetitions of affirmations leads to belief. And once that belief becomes a deep conviction, things begin to happen. Now, Frankie, I got to ask you: Do you know who said that? No. But what would it, now? You did. You probably you might never even have heard it. But if I tell you the repetition, the of the affirmation that he said a million times, and you knew who it was, wouldn't that be crazy? That yeah. you would actually know. Well, here's what he said: I'm the greatest. I'm the greatest of all time. Right. Now, oh, Ali, like, boom. Like, everybody who is listening to me right now on your show went, Ali, right as you were saying it. Now, Mm -hmm. how is that possible that you could actually know what he said, but you don't know the quote? Because he said it so many times that it's been burned into your brain. Right. You know, Muhammad Ali, he'd been saying that since he was a teenager. And when they took the greatest athletes of our last century mm-hmm. and they get what the sports writers, who were the greatest athletes? When it came to boxing, he was the greatest of all time. He was overall the number four athlete of all time, according to the sports writers. And Joe Lewis was number 17. The yeah. greatest of all time. He said it so many times, he burned it in everybody's brain. You see, with DDP Yoga and my DDP Yoga Now app, every Monday, I've got a new inspirational message for you. And it has to do with something that happened in my life. Maybe I watched a, a documentary, which I always encourage people, watch inspiring documentaries. Yeah. Like the one I just that are what's going to be coming up. I'm going to talk about about the band Journey and how this kid, Arnell, who was a kid from the Philippines who spoke very little English but sounded exactly like Steve Perry. Exactly. Wow. Maybe even a bigger voice than Steve. And how the guy found them, Neil Sw- uh, Sean, who's the guy's the main owner of Journey, because the band owns they're like they're a real band where everybody owns a piece of it, but he was the leader of the band, and he found this kid on YouTube, and then brought him to America, and then this kid's got to believe in himself enough to be singing in front of the band Journey, which he's been idolizing since he was a kid. I mean, that like that is crazy. such an amazing documentary. But and I'll talk about that, or I'll I'll talk about something about. The walls that you know that you know we put up in front of ourselves, you know, to keep us out, you know, and that tell us what we can't do. And I, you know, I might be talking about, you know, the, you know, I don't believe God puts those walls up in front of us to keep us out. I believe right. God puts those walls up in front of us to see how bad we really want it. You know, and then and I'll you, get. You're not going to miss. You're not going to miss his inspirational Monday either because it comes screeching in with this crazy music. <laughs> and then you, no matter what, no matter what, if you just go back and listen to, I got 80 of them up there. Wow. You know, yeah. It's full of That's awesome. inspiring and, and then videos of Arthur and Jared and Christina 
and Michelle. I mean, there's so many from people in a lot of pain to people who are really, really big to people who are really beat up. So when you see their videos, because one of them are going to speak to you and they're going to make you feel, well, if he can do that or she can do that, so can I. And that's what the DDP Yoga Now app is all about. It's your tracking of your pictures, your weight, your measurements, your pain. It even gets into blood pressure, blood sugar, A1C. It gets into the motivational. That's going to keep you positive and moving forward. That's why those pictures are so important. So you and can community. see 30 days a difference. Oh, the community, our online community, online Facebook. Just go on. Don't listen to anything I have to say. Go on Facebook, DDP Yoga. Don't go to the, the corporate page. Go to the members only page with 19,000 people on it and see how much these people really care about helping each other. Like I help a person here, a person here, a person there, but then they help a person here, a person here, a person there, and then they help. It's all pay it forward thing. And it's turned into this thing with DDP yoga. Now we've got over 150 workouts. We've got, uh, over a hundred different food dishes and protein drinks, juice drinks, you know, desserts, pizza, real pizza that is healthy, real food that tastes amazing. We've got Motivational Monday, DDP TV. I mean, it's the full service, help you own your life. It's amazing. It's amazing. It's a wonderful, wonderful incredible site and what you're doing and, and what the community is doing and everybody it it is it's absolutely amazing and i encourage everybody to go to to diamonddallaspage.com to his website check out the ddp yoga you can get it on you got an iphone you got whatever you got samsung i don't know just download the app and you'll be happy i think you'll be happy i mean i love looking yeah. at it <laughs> But you but now you've got my email and yeah, I'm but making I gotta you, I already I'm sent making, you an email. I already sent you an email. I there did. you go. So now so now I got your email and I'm yeah, not gonna let now you have a committed. Yeah, don't yeah, let now it. you're there. So yeah, so now the coach has another coach. Because we all go. need those coaches. Everybody we every all, coach needs a coach. Everybody coach does. Coaches. Everyone. Do. Every, everybody. everybody needs someone else to hold on to to help them get over that line. That's why I say, you know, the, again, and you said it earlier, you know, never underestimate the power you give someone by believing in them. And all they need is that little bit of shove sometimes. And then they'll turn around and help shove two other people forward and then two other. And that's when stuff, you know, to me, like, you know, people talk about depression and, you know, I, you know, I, I deal with depression on a daily basis and I get that. But what are you doing to combat that? Like the number one thing that you should do is help somebody. Yeah, it does because help. When it you does. help, it, it's huge. There's yeah. nothing like, I, I don't, I, I've created this, I don't you know, know what, this community. Before you go there, I, I, we only got a couple of minutes left, but I want to make sure that people know this, that you have, have traveled and gone to the troops, that you have, a, you, you know, you go and you inspire them. Talk about, give me, give us a few minutes of that. Well, I, I've been to Iraq three times, Afghanistan once, wow. and you know I've got a special spot in my heart for the military. <clears throat> Excuse me, uh, Arthur was a disabled vet, mm -hmm. and anytime I get out there, like I, I communicate with so many of those guys who actually uh, <clears throat> who actually I met, um, and I'll tell you one that was really it was it was the saddest story. I was I was flying home from Iraq and I got a um I got a uh, a message and it said Diamond Dallas Page fan dies in line of duty. And oh. it was a beautiful letter from his uncle who was a captain. His name was Luke and I was so blown away. I wrote this letter to his mom and his name is Chris Simpson. And he was a great kid. I actually remember to I very I'll take pictures like where I put my hand up and I have other person put their hand up to complete the diamond cutter sign, sure. putting our thumb and index, index fingers together. But once in a while, I, after doing that really quick, I go, 
take this picture. And I grab him around the neck like I'm going to hit him with a diamond cutter. Yeah. And the kid would always like, oh, my God, because they've been dreaming about, you know, this since they were a little kid. And now we're doing it. And he sent me that picture with Chris. And I uh-huh. wrote this letter to his mom. And then, uh, you know, we, we became close. And I, uh, and I, I was actually there for the anniversary of his death. And I came in there. And I spoke, and and uh, we raised about twenty seven thousand dollars for a park that was wow. named after him. And Love so, that. so there's, Love there's something that. left of her son for this uh, for this kid who's a warrior. And, um, you know, it just I got a special spot with the, with the military and uh, any of the guys who uh, who um, you know get a hold of me through my email or Twitter or whatever. And, you know, I stay in contact with the guys who, uh, you know, who I, who I met out there. And uh, I've got a lot of great relationships with them. Nice. You know, I, um, and we have a military mom show on, on Toginet Radio, too, which is, which is really nice. But, and, wow, I mean, don't, aren't you so glad you guys tuned in today to hear Dallas? I mean, isn't he an absolutely amazing guy? I love that. I love all that you're doing. And thank you so much from the bottom of my heart for all that you're doing for everybody, for what you just offered to give to me. I thank you. Really. You're, well, you're very special. I'm looking, for, I'm you're looking very forward special. to your journey now. So I'm glad you're already, you're already checked the email. Beat up. You're, you're locked in. <laughs> the first thing you're doing after you talk to me, you're going to pull up the DDP Yoga Now app and you're going to take those six pictures in the positions because the pictures yeah, are, about like, physio- okay. are about physiology your yeah. flexibility, and your core strength. And the coolest thing that happens, and now that people have it on the app, they actually really do it. Because before, a lot of people did it, but a lot of people didn't do it, and they were so mad at themselves uh, for not yeah. taking them. Because when you can see the difference, and especially when it comes i got to stop you, Dallas. We're out of time. Our show is over. Like, wow. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Thank no you way. so much for coming on today. You were great. Hey. I hope you'll come back. As soon as your book comes out, maybe you'll come back. Absolutely. And I want to do a little checkup on you from month to month. I'll send like that email player. out right now. Have an awesome day. Have an awesome day, everybody. You take care. Where we are in the world, come back next week and see us. Bye now. Stop. When the chips were down, they didn't stop. Stories of people who, when the odds were against them, turned defeat into victory. You've been listening to Mission Unstoppable with Coach Frankie Picasso. See you next time, and always remember... Don't, 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 don't stop.